Greetings fellow members of the Esoteric Order of Gamers and I'm back again to do the second part in this series about painting Conquest The Last Argument of Kings. This time I'm going to be painting the Spire and they're mostly going to be a Shabti Bone. That is the base colour that I've decided to use. The photos that you can see on the Parabellum website use a sort of white and blue combination but I thought I'd go for a more bone kind of look. Now the Spire are a strange spacefaring race who came to uh, the planet millennia ago and set up these strange Spire towers uh, where they live now and create these clones with which they wage war. They're strange looking things and quite alien looking, really interesting. And um, since I've got quite a few of them to paint, I'm going to keep this color scheme relatively easy. If you saw my last video and indeed all of my other painting uh, videos, you'll know that I like to keep uh, the painting of miniatures pretty fast and easy and not go into too much detail with each of the individual figures. And this especially holds true for massed ranks of figures like this because there are lots to paint and I want to get through them pretty quickly. And really the effect you're going for is a really nice effect with a whole bunch of them all together. Um, the individual paint jobs don't have to be perfect. Okay, you can see that I've given it a nice coat of Shabti Bone all over. Now, Incubi Darkness is going to be the contrasting color I'm going to use. And I'm using this color to paint all the bandages that are all over the figure. If you look closely, you'll see that um, its arms and legs and uh, torso are wrapped in, in bandages. So um, I'm using this nice dark blue color to give a really strong contrast to the Ashabti bone. And you can see whereas I used a big brush to get that base coat on and just put it on very roughly because I was covering the whole figure, here I'm using a much smaller brush and putting it on more carefully. As always, remember to mix a bit of water with your color so it flows on nice and easily and just gets into all the uh, cracks and crannies of the area that you're painting. There are also some more bandages wrapped around the haft of the spear that he's wielding. I'll paint those in now as well. And there you have it. There's the base colors down on my figure. Uh, just that bone all over and then the incubite darkness on the areas of cloth and wrapping. Finally, there are some other areas of material draped over the figure. And for that, I'm using Dryad Bark. It goes very nicely with the incubite darkness. It's a nice dark brown color. So I'll be painting in his um, loincloth or skirt and any other areas of cloth that are just draped from the figure. Once that's thoroughly dry, it's time for the wash. Good old Agrax Earthshade. Be careful you don't tip that bottle over. And I'm just going to paint the entire figure with a relatively large brush. And I'm putting it on quite generous, generously straight from the bottle and covering the entire figure, the bone areas and the blue areas and the brown areas. So very easy to do. Now, as always, when you're putting on a wash, make sure it doesn't pool too much in uh, recesses. You can use uh, wipe off some of the excess ink on a paper towel and then blot up any areas where it's pooled. Um, you want a nice settling of the wash in the recesses of the figure. But you don't want it to pull in the recesses and just turn into a brown mush. So uh, be careful with the way you apply your wash and control it. And there you go, washed all over and ready to dry. So I'm going to do this with all of the figures. There's quite a few to do, so put on an audio book or a podcast and just churn through them. And here you can see the figure when it's dry and already it's looking pretty good. The wash has gone into all the recesses. Um, it's unified the color scheme nicely 
And really this is fine for a rank and file figure. I'm going to do more detail and I'm going to do highlighting now however and make it look even better. So I'm mixing a bit of white scar with my Ashabti bone and I'm going to make a much lighter mix and then I'm going to start hand drawing in the or hand painting in the highlights so it uh, lifts the figure and gives it a more of a sense of three dimensions and of size. And yes this process does take a while you're doing uh, these hand painted brush strokes on uh, quite carefully but you don't have to be obsessive about it um, use the brush and get some nice um, brush strokes on there and just paint the edges of things so it has a nice highlight. I'm also not obsessing over this to the degree that I make sure that every single um, edge is, is highlighted. I'm just doing enough so I get the effect. Um, there's a lot of figures to do so it doesn't have to be perfect. So after you've done those highlights, you might want to go even a little bit lighter and add a bit more white and just do an even lighter highlight just on the very, very raised tips of things that would catch the light, like there's just the tops there of the highlights, things like that. It's not an essential step, but can give it just a little bit more of a sense of depth. Now it's time to do a highlight pass on the areas I painted with Incubi Darkness. And again, I'm just mixing a little bit of white with that. Nothing too fancy highlight wise. Um, you could of course mix a little bit of a Shabti Bone in there as well to sort of, you know, so it isn't too bright a highlight. I think I added a little bit of a Shabti Bone a bit later. Um, this was a little bit too light for me. But just play with it until you get the effect that you like. And again, just paint on those highlights. Now I'm using quite a fine brush here because we've got all this fine wrapping but I'm not necessarily really closely following the actual um, sculpture itself. Um, sometimes you can just put on the effect of uh, highlighting in this kind of detail by just painting in a few lines. So again follow whatever precision level you're comfortable with. You can see with things like when I'm highlighting this bit of material here that it's quite a strong contrast between the dark and the light. Um, you wouldn't necessarily do that for a hero figure to have that level of contrast but for a rank and file figure it's sometimes good because you'll be seeing this from a distance most of the time and you'll get the effect that you're after without mucking around with blending. Next up I'm using Gawthor Brown to highlight the Dryad uh, Bark brown color. It's just a lighter brown and I again I just paint that straight over the raised areas of the cloth to give it that lovely sense of depth. And there he is my Spire infantry figure. Now you can see I've added a little bit more detail. Um, I just painted that sort of dagger thing that's hanging at the front of his loincloth. You can do that whatever way you want to um, but it just adds a little bit more detail and they're done. Next up I'm going to do these brute drones and there's three of these big meaty figures and don't they look nasty. And this is pretty much the same color scheme as the basic drones. Um, same colors and same techniques. First a very quick easy brush over with a Shabti bone to give it a base coat all over the figure. Then again I'll be using Incubi Darkness to paint in the areas where he's uh, swaddled with wrappings. And then finally a highlight of, uh, well not a highlight but a um, bit of corn red to bring out the banner that he's got on the back there. And uh, this is the last colour I'm using for the Spire to contrast with the dark blue of the Incubi Darkness. And if I keep this red nice and dark, uh, more of a burgundy than a red really, 
Um, I think it'll go quite nicely with that um, dark blue. And as you can see, I've also painted his uh, loincloth in that red. For the gloves, I'm painting these Steel Legion Drab. Just a different brown color, not quite so dark. And he's got these sort of large mittens on that are holding these weapons. So I'm painting him that brown color. Now it's time for that all over wash of Agrax Earthshade and it'll make all these base colors uh, blend together nicely and work together nicely. So I'm using a pretty large brush for this one so I can get lots of that wash over this large figure. I'm just painting the whole lot, again being careful not to have the wash pull too much in the recesses. Just spreading it out over the figure. Now it's time to do some highlighting and just the same techniques as I used for the smaller figures. And this is very easy to do because as you can see there are lots of areas of raised detail on the figure and it's just a matter of just picking out those raised areas and then you'll get all that lovely detail um, coming out in relief. As you can see, I've already painted some highlights on the um, bandages there and highlighted those. And now I'm going back and doing a little bit more of a lighter highlight on the bone. Again, you don't have to be too precise. Here I'm doing it from above so I can easy, uh, more easily see the areas where a, a light from above would hit the figure. I've also painted in that uh, headpiece in a dark metal color as well and given a bit of a wash. And there he is in all his nasty glory. And you can see uh, really just highlights all over with the base colors mixed with either a bit of a shabty brown or a bit of white. Very simple. Uh, the corn red I highlighted with a bit of Mephiston red, but I didn't highlight it too much because I wanted the red to stay quite dark. And um, that's about it. He's come out quite well. There's two more of these and then I'm done. Finally, I've got the Ferromancer, who's the leader of the Spire Army in the core set. As you can see, I've just used a shabty bone on those bony areas. Then the Incubi Darkness on his uh, cloak. Just the same uh, color scheme I used before and the Agrax Earthshade wash all over. When this is dry, I'll do the highlighting in the same way as I did on the other figures. And here he is in all his glory. Just some simple highlighting. I haven't gone to too much trouble, even though this is a hero figure. I still haven't gone to a huge amount of trouble blending those highlights together. Um, he still looks good. A little bit of detail work on the little potions on his pouch and things like that. And here's the final Spire Army, and I've got some extras here. I haven't included the Abomination, because I'm going to do that in a separate video. But here I've got the Brute Drones, um, the normal drones, looking great as a massed rank unit there. I've got two hero figures, um, the first the Ferromancer, of course, and then I have an extra figure which I bought. This is the High Clone Executor. And then finally, up the back, this is an, another unit I bought separately. It's the Marksman Clones. And this is a spectacular unit. Lots of lovely detail in this ranged unit. Really nice. You can see uh, the detail is just stunning. Um, the figures that have been released since the core set have just got better and better. Here's um, one of the, the unit holding the banner and one of the um, bowmen. You can see you've even got the arrow sculpted in there. These are lovely figures as you can see. I went for a sort of pinky flesh effect. So that's the army so far and next up I'll be painting this beast. Yes, the Abomination which is the huge spire creature. Stay tuned, that's coming up in the last episode in this series. Thanks very much for watching and I hope this has been helpful.